Pete, Sensei Pete, thank you so much for joining us here today on Tear Kai Tales. We're really excited to have you as a guest. Uh, I look forward to all of our listeners hearing your story of being a competitive athlete in the sport of karate growing up and that continuing to have a huge impact on your life as you became a Hollywood stuntman. And now you currently run your own karate school. So everybody's really excited about hearing your story, especially this day and age with the hype behind the Cobra Kai series. So Mm -hmm. I just want to tell our listeners that everyone's going to be hearing the story of a real life Cobra Kai. So we're excited to talk to you today, Sensei Pete. Thank you for joining us here on Tear Kai Tales. No, thank you. I'm super excited. Um, I know we spoke about this, you know, uh, a little while back. And I remember hearing you talk about you, uh, not trying to, but wanting to put this into play. So I'm excited for you as much as I'm excited for myself being on here that you have this going and you you've put into play and it's it's awesome. So. Thank you Pete. Thank you so much. I'm really blessed to have wonderful friends and family making it all possible and the support and just that we all get to share in this journey together. So it's it's a great team effort and um just excited to that's what it's all about is bringing those mm-hmm. stories together and bringing it out and sharing this journey in life together. So yay, exciting. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so starting about journey is in life, tell us a little bit about um, your family structure growing up, where you're from, and a little bit of your family dynamic and how that kind of set the tone and had an impact for your life. Um, family structure, it was, it was, weird but not weird in a bad way it was somewhat militant when it came to uh training and uh competition and preparation and the dedication um of all of that but then it was so laxed after that mm. like i didn't really have curfew um I was free to do you know a lot of things I mean as as long as you know I I told my parents at that time when I was younger you know where and what I was doing they were very lax with um would allow me to do you know um not whatever I wanted to do but a lot of things so it was it was a little weird It it was confusing at times because it was so so structured and so uh, militant and 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 so uh, to the T with with some things and then some things were like okay go have fun and uh, check in you know whenever you check in and we'll see you later. <laughs> wow, so. do you think that maybe they that militant structure? Was your parents' way of kind of setting up boundaries and rules and guidelines and senses of responsibility? And then that freedom was to be like, let's see if they put it in play in life. You know what? I've never thought of that until you just said that. (laughs) Um, That makes perfect sense. I don't know if they did that on purpose or subconsciously or or not. (laughs) Yeah, but that does make um, it makes a lot of sense. So it's, maybe, maybe, yeah. And I mean, maybe that sets a tone for how you teach your students. I mean, you know, we have uh, an instructor that you know, or parents that give us rules and guidelines, and you know, these this is how you conduct yourself. This is how you handle your work ethic. These are these are the rules of life. But you can't have anybody there twenty four seven reminding you of those rules. You have to learn them. You have to incorporate them and use them. And then perhaps that's been able to help teach you how your dynamic of teaching your students of these are the rules. These are, this is what's expected. This is how you train. This is how you live your life, how you make your decisions, but you have the freedom. Are you going to, are you going to do that? Are you going to choose that way? Or are you going to choose another way? But the only way to decide that is if you're left alone. Mm-hmm. and have to to live and see, am I going to use what I've been taught? Just, yeah. Maybe. Right. And how am I going to use it? I mean, and, and, and I believe that's with, uh, that's with life in general. Yeah. 
you know, cause that's, that's everything, not just the, uh, not training or teaching. That's, that's, um, you know, school, you know, from elementary school to middle school, to high school, college and, and whatnot to, you know, career choices, um, mm -hmm. relationship choices. I, so I, I think, um, that is with, uh, life in general, you know, you, yeah. you have your, um, you have your, how I should say, your, uh, not your goals, but you have your, your, your path, mm -hmm. right? And then you have the choice to continue down this path or to veer to the left or right or whatnot. And not that the left or right path um, is a bad path. I mean, it can be, yeah. um, but you have that choice and, and it's totally up to, to the individual Mm -hmm. um, so it definitely helped me um, without even knowing that's what they were doing um, in my everyday life. Yeah, that's so that's amazing. Because I think, you know, we give the we're, we're taught something and then are we going to incorporate it? And then that's where we can maybe ingrain permanently those lessons learned is when we're on our own. And do we choose to make that decision or do we do choose to live that way or, or use that helpful words of advice or do we ignore it? You know, and then if we use it on our own, totally unprompted, then it becomes ingrained and it becomes a character trait, you know, could be just something that's kind of a neat way to think about things, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah no, whether, definitely. Yeah. I mean, when you teach your karate students, you probably give them drills, you right. know, and, and it's the students that take that home when they're not in the school. And they're in their backyard and doing those drills. And then they come back into this, the school and you see the improvement, you know, it's kind of like with 100%. With, and, yeah. and, and I definitely see um, those students who take those drills home or just in general are um, practicing outside of the dojo. You know, you can definitely tell when someone is um, incorporating their training outside of the dojo and not just in the dojo mm -hmm. or after class, staying an extra 20, 30, 40 minutes and going over some of the drills that we just did or going over a drill or technique that they want to get better. So you, you can definitely see the students that do that and the students that don't do that. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, you have to make it your own. You can have someone teaching you a technique, a technique, a technique, but then you have to kind of like go and kind of almost figure it out yourself and how it works for your body and then make it like that muscle memory. I just know like for the equestrian world, you know, we'll have a lesson kind of like your school and our lesson might last an hour, but we don't maybe ride with that trainer for maybe a couple months or we don't have our, our next lesson with our trainer mm -hmm. for like another week. But you know, you, you're being, you have been given a technique in your lesson, but then when you come to the barn to just ride and practice, I know for me, that's when I've able to actually ingrained it and it clicked mm -hmm. is when I'm by myself and I have my coach in my head and then I work on something with my horse and then I'm like, Oh, you kind of figure it out mm -hmm. how it works for you. And then, then it becomes a consistent behavior, a consistent yes. technique, but it's yes. like, you have to be kind of like shown the way and then left alone to figure mm -hmm. it out. That's like life, right? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is definitely, I mean, it, it's with everything because mm -hmm. exactly what you said, you hit it right, right on the, the head of the nail. It, it's, it's with everything. And, and, um, in the martial arts, it's exactly like that. I mean, again, with everything, but, you know, so I have, I have some students that, um, you know, I'll teach a, a, a spinning hook kick too. Right. And, you know, I tell them, you know, usually all spinning techniques are defensive techniques. So in, in, a, in a, in a competition fighting uh, purpose, um, all spinning techniques are usually nine out of 10 times a defensive techniques. Um, so you are going to use them when your opponent is on the attack on the offense. Um, so certain techniques uh, kind of uh, work better with other techniques or uh, counter other techniques better. So the spinning hook kick, counters a a kicker um uh, very very well uh, someone who lifts up the leg and starts kicking towards you very well so that's that's the base of the spinning hook kick um now to land that spinning hook kick i can't tell you exactly when because it depends on how fast your opponent is kicking to you 
how tall your opponent is, how short your opponent is. You may have to wait a little bit longer. You may have to not wait so long. And it also depends on how fast is your spinning hook kick. Do you have to take off a little bit earlier because your spinning hook kick is not as fast and so on and so forth. So all of that, you have to figure out. Mm. You know, that it, it can't be taught. Right. You know, I can teach you the technique. I can tell you when to use the technique and what technique it is um, better to use against, um, but you are the only one that can figure out when and how uh, exactly when to use it and who to use it against. Um, and, and that's with, with, uh, with, with our stunts and, and, and stunt fights and everything like that mm -hmm. as well, because, you know, we, we're, we're, we're taught off our fight scene, you know, uh, with our counterpart and, now we have to um, make it our own. We have to partner up very well. Um, we have to, how I say, uh, bring that that swag. Yes. And, and coming coming from um, the neighborhood that I that I that I grew up with, grow up grew up in. Um, you know, it was a little rough area. It's a little more. Um, I mean, I don't want to say ghetto, um, but it, it was it was a rough area. So, mm -hmm. you know, swag is, is a very big thing um, in, in my neighborhood where I grew up. So it can transfer into everything, not just your haircut, not just your clothes or your Jordans. I don't know where Jordans, but, you know, <laughs> your sneakers. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's that's a different type of swag. But I... Your like style, to bring my style, my swag into my fight scenes, mm -hmm. and that's what makes me fight like Pete, not yes, Joe, and so on and so forth. You know, yeah, I think that's that's a wonderful point, Pete, because you um you find your style, you find your swag, and that's what makes you unique. You have the technique when you're talking about the spinning hook kick, you practice that over and over so that the technique becomes second nature. So you don't have to think about it. It's there because when you compete uh, in karate, or if you're given a, a fight in stunts, or say, for instance, I'm riding my horse cross country, you don't have time to think about the technique of jumping the jump or throwing that punch or landing that kick in competition because it happens so fast. You have to trust that it's there in your body and then your way of adapting it to whatever situation is given you, that's your swag, that's what you bring. And then it's it's there. It's there as your foundation. And like you said, it, it helps you fight like you. Um, it gives you your particular style and, you know, with, with connecting it to the equestrian world, you practice that technique of controlling your horse as far as their rate and their speed and their approach to the jump, because you're the pilot and you have mm -hmm. to navigate your way to that jump, but something could go off. Your horse could slip, they could spook and, and you have to make that split second change mm -hmm. to get to that jump safely. The only way you and your horse can do that is from practice and practice that you are connecting in your communication with your, your aids, with the reins, your legs, your hands, your body, so that you and the horse can make that quick adaptation and then jump the jump. Or mm -hmm. if you're in a competition and your opponent all of a sudden fakes you out maybe, and then they end up throwing a different kick, you have to, you, you don't have time to think. You just have to like react and the technique has to be there, right? 100 100 percent exactly what you said um is is true it, yeah. it it is what it is um yeah. you you have no time to think um you just have to relay or rely i should say on your training mm -hmm. uh, and, and and the drills that you went over to be able to adapt and change at the drop of a hat yes you know yeah um which is very true. And then it happens in stunts too. You know, even though we, we have our choreographed moves, um, you know, it, you're not always going to be in the, the same exact spot. So uh, you, you have to adapt. You yes. have to move. Um, doing live shows, 
um, you have to adapt a lot more. It's not like TV and film where TV and film, you know, I have my, you know, uh, my main character, whoever I'm fighting against or doing a scene with. And that is the individual that you're going to be training with, practicing with and shooting with, Mm -hmm. with uh, uh, live uh, stunt shows. It's changing, you know, Uh, your partner is um, six feet tall one day, you know, five, four the next day. Yeah. Five seventy the the day after that, you know, 200 pounds one day, you know, 150 the next. And, you know, so the weight distribution, the height, the length, you know, is going to change. So you have to be able to adapt um, and be fluid in your uh, movement. Mm hmm. And that adaptation and that fluidity and movement, I think that's a bit of a description of your your life, Pete, right? I mean, take us back a little bit. So kind of getting back into to that aspect of where exactly did you grow up? And then what were some challenges that you and your family faced that you had to adapt and had to be fluid? And how did you make your way? How did you find karate? And how was that a foundation for you and gave you some type of identity so tell us a little bit about about that journey that early journey as your foundation yes and and, it, and a journey it was <laughs> and still is yes um a great one though a great one um yeah. even through the trials and tribulations mm-hmm. uh still a great one um i was um brought up in washington heights um this is uh, uptown Manhattan. Okay. And it is, um, it's funny because when I explain to um, people who are not from the area or New York um, City area, and I tell them Washington Heights, um, if they don't know Washington Heights or the area, then I say uptown Manhattan. And as soon as I say Manhattan, they think skyscrapers. They think yeah. all the beautiful buildings and lights and you know the yellow the yellow jib, uh, the yellow cabs and whatnot. Uh-huh. And that's not <laughs> not what it is at all. Um, it's a beautiful area, yes, beautiful yeah. area. Um, I wouldn't change where I was brought up, um, but it made you, you have, who you are. It gave you yes. your swag. That right. you brought into your fights and and you brought into your life. So yeah, t- this is exciting. I I don't think I don't think I can be where I am today or who I am today without being um, or without coming from where I came from. Mm. Um, and and that's a fact. Um, but uptown uptown Manhattan, you know, you have you have downtown, you have midtown, and then uptown. Uh, to to give a a better uh, or a uh, description of how close I was to another borough, you have the five boroughs. So uptown Manhattan. So when I say, oh, I live by the Bronx. Now, when I talk to people who are not from New York or whatnot, and I say the Bronx, they're like, oh, why, oh. That that's not nice. So <laughs> right, that's just yeah. kind of the stereotype that we hear. That's the stereotype, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and there there's some there's some beautiful parts in the Bronx and 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 whatnot. Um, it, it's like but, that tough dude. It's like you're from the Bronx, and it's just right. you automatically imagine tough having to right. scrap on the streets. Right, right. You know, so um, where where I live, uptown Manhattan, I live by. Um, let's say 200 street. Um, If I walk to 207 and then cross over the bridge, I'm in the Bronx. That's how close I am to the Bronx. Wow. Like, and, 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 and literally walking distance. It's, Mm -hmm. it's not like, Oh, you're going to walk for hours and hours and hours and hours. No, my, my high school was in the Bronx because that was um, where I was zoned for. Okay. Um, And, and and whatnot so i uh, was very very close to bronx i did live in the bronx for uh for some years as well um but i was definitely uh born and raised in the heights um kind of like the um the play in the heights yeah 
So oh. that's that's where I'm from. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I'll yep. be darned. And then mm-hmm. how many were in your family? And then how how did you get into karate? And yeah, that that journey there. I I am the the only one from okay. um, my mom's side from my okay. mom and my father. I do have um, some half brothers and sisters, um, and there are a few. There are a few of us. Um, we didn't live in the same household. Okay. Um, so I I wasn't as close to them um, as some other uh, families are. Um, I did have the closest in my age was uh, my brother Eric, and I, I, we, he did live in the household for a little bit of time on and off here and there, so I was close with him. Um, and he was he was a great uh, older brother. It was it was great. I mean, even though when I was younger and we did uh, live in the same household, um, it wasn't too nice, but that's siblings anyway but as we got older it was um it was really good to have an older brother yeah yeah um and as far as what else you said siblings like, and, yeah and then how did you and the make your way into karate well my father is my instructor um wow. so he he started off in um boxing okay uh, when he was um, a lot younger, when he was uh, a child, and and then I believe he got into um, martial arts um, from his older sister's um, uh, boyfriend at the time, and and that's how it kind of just started with the family. Yeah, and then oh, he yeah. was my instructor, so. It just kind of went into play at a, at a young age and yeah, kind of just went from there. Was it something that you wanted to follow in your father's footsteps or were you just generally passionate about karate uh, or did you find it as a way as off of defending yourself, kind of coming I, from a I bit of a say, rough I mean, this area? Is, this, is, this is many years ago, so yeah, I want to say it was more for defense. Okay. Like yeah, I want to learn this to to defend mm-hmm. uh, myself, um, and and maybe maybe a little bit of uh, a passion because it just was cool, you know. Yeah, and, it's and what you grew up with, right? It's just yeah, it was just like something that did you admire that a lot in your father, and you wanted to to get into that to kind of continue the family tradition and make him proud, and and then you just found your passion in it. Because sometimes, Definitely. you know, you can find a sport just because like, oh, you just, it's nobody in your family did it. You just get into it and it's like becomes your passion. But this is really cool because yeah. it was like you kind of grew up with it and then you had to find your connection with the sport. Why was it important in your life and what kind of triggered that? Yeah, so not so much of um, continuing the, the the family, uh, not legend, but the family sport or whatnot. So not not so much of that. But um, definitely more so, you know, I, I, I can make my, my, my father proud. And at the same time, I'm doing something cool and it was fun. Um, and then it kind of took off. And then um, then it didn't become so much fun because now it was work. You yeah. know, at first, you know, you kind of just, you know, it's a hobby, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and then you kind of become... Um, pretty good at it and and my father being who my father is um, seen that talent and he uh, ran with it so it wasn't it wasn't so much of a fun um, hobby anymore it was more like okay you have a talent here and mm-hmm. and we're gonna really tap into that and take it to a whole nother level that's so cool Tell us a little bit about, I read a little in your biography about your competition, one of your first competitions. Ooh. I want the audiences to hear this amazing <laughs> story. This is like something you see in a movie. Like that's all I'm going to preface it. So tell us this little, this amazing story of, of one of your first competitions. Yeah. So, so my first competition, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was 1986. Wow. Um, 
Yes, a little, little bit of time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I um I was super nervous. I mean, nervous could not even describe of how I was feeling. And, and I'm young and I still remember, I don't remember, you know, so many details, but I still remember, you know, it, it just being like just overwhelming. Um I was I was a beginner. I believe I was a yellow belt. And um either myself or you know my father or someone forgot my belt. I mean I, I have to blame myself. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, let's as I, as I an athlete, that. we have to pack our own bag. Like right. if as a gymnast, things, no if matter, we left you know, our grips, that's your own fault. <laughs> right. You know, even if I was so young or younger. Yeah. Um, so I, I forgot my belt. Um, so I, you have to have all the pro- proper equipment and, and attire uh, to compete. So I had to borrow, I borrowed a belt from a family friend that was at the event as well. And it was the green belt, um, which was the next category. So you, you have your, your beginners and then you have your intermediate. Um, so basically my first tournament that I was a beginner, I forgot my belt, put on a green belt. So I was already nervous to begin with. Then I'm in a whole nother category that I didn't even think I was ready for the category that I was in. Let and now alone you're this higher category. Yeah. yeah I'm on, I, I mean, it, it was it was it was overwhelming. Um, I don't remember the details. My, my father continues to joke around to today um, of I was making so many excuses to um, my legs were hurting, you know, to uh, my back's hurting, uh, and 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 he would come over and he was like, "Oh man, what what did you do?" and and kind of start a. Uh, Mr. Miyagi, my legs and massaging and, you know, and, and all this stuff. And, and he, he, I guess he thought that, yes, I was really hurt or hurting, you know, maybe from the previous week of training or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't remember, and maybe I don't want to remember, but he said, then I told him, I, my eyes are hurting. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think that did it in. I think that gave away your, uh, your so ploy. So then he realized, uh, nothing is wrong with me, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and I, in my head now, again, I don't remember, or maybe I don't want to remember. Um, but I'm guessing out of the same, my legs and my back, my arm, and he's not getting the point. Like, I don't want to do this. Okay. If I can't You're scared. See, yeah. yeah. If I can't see, then I can't do this, you know? So, hey, take me out. <laughs> and uh, that's not how my father uh, rolls. So he's like, yeah, you're fine. You, you're doing it. Period. <laughs> Done. Gosh. So you're, you're in the competition. Okay. So you're competing. And then mm-hmm. what happened? Um, I was doing good. Yeah. I was, I was doing good. I was, I was, I was winning and, and then next match, I'm, 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 I won that. And, you know, it's, it, it's uh, you know, as you continue to, to win, you, you progress and you go on to your next round and next round and semifinals and whatnot. And um, I, I made it to the finals. Wow. Um, so you come to this competition to. Yeah. and you, you're forced to compete against more advanced fighters. And mm-hmm. this little kid comes in. And he's beating all the advanced fighters. Like, yeah. that's so, yeah. like I said, that's and a movie. And I couldn't see at that time. I was blind and I was beating. <laughs> right. <laughs> Your eyes were hurting. <laughs> you, you were beating them blindfolded. <laughs> Dad just uh, kicked you in the ring. And, oh, that is, that's like, like legit. That's a movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, yeah. So it, it was, it was awesome. Um, I end up uh, making it, um, all the way to the finals. And uh, I remember uh, having to compete against. So at that time, back then, um, 
at a certain age, they had the uh, the males and the females competing against each other, and then at a certain age, then they 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 separate them. Mm-hmm. At this point, 1986, if I'm not mistaken, um, I was young, so they 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 had uh, both the male and female fighters um, competing against each other. So I remember having to have to compete against um, family friend. Uh, that that we also trained with um, okay. and and whatnot, and I probably had a crush on her. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, so I had to compete against her. Oh, and how did how did that affect you that psychologically? I did, I did not want to. Like, I wasn't nervous, scared. I just I didn't want to. I didn't want to kick or punch at her. I didn't. I didn't want like, you know. I mean, yeah. That's your friend, uh, and, and you. Yeah, that's my that's my friend. And, and you had a crush. And you're like, and I had a crush. You know, like, yeah. she was she was very very pretty, mm-hmm. and she was very talented. She was very good too. Um, not to take any talent away from her, she was very very good. Yeah, that's um, awesome. But yeah, I uh, end up lo- losing uh, that match because you I held was back not mad about it. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely held back big time, uh, yeah. but I wasn't mad at it at all. <laughs> right. Did but did on the flip side, like did she know you were holding back? Because I don't like think if you so. win something, you want to know that you like won it outright, not that somebody like kind of like no. threw it, you know? Yeah. So. She because she did not know oh. and I've never told Good. her. Yeah. Um, Unless yeah. she's listening now. <laughs> Unless she's <laughs> Oh, well, she'd be like, yeah. Pete. Oh, oh, I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, yeah, just just joking. <laughs> yeah. But no, you did the yes. gentlemanly thing and oh, yeah. that's awesome. I, I did, I did. Um but yeah, it was it was it was uh the first and um it was it was fun. It was a very, very scary. Um, but it was fun at the same time. Yeah. And then yeah. so you pretty much grew up at that at the karate school. I remember you tell me a little bit uh, in some of our previous conversations, how that at one point had become your home. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So could you yeah. take us through that journey a little bit and then kind of coming out of that, um, how it kind of like had an impact on your life, kind of going through some challenges that your family faced. Um. Yeah. So there was, there was a, a point in time and not, not too many, um, not, too many people not very many people know at all but we we were homeless Mm -hmm. our family was homeless um and i have to say it 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 wasn't all bad Mm -hmm. you know you know i can't say oh my oh my goodness we, we were homeless and we were um in the street and no food and this yeah. and that, you know, so it, it wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. We, we didn't have a, a house, well, with apartment. I didn't have a house until later, later, later on. Uh, we lived in an apartment. Um, we lost the apartment. Um, and we basically just lived in the karate school. Um, I had a, uh, one of the mats that we rolled on and flipped on and that was, that was my bed, um, wow. and it was uh, for for some time. Um, I want to say almost a year um, until we, you know, got back on our feet. Mm-hmm. Um, the worst thing that I can say about that time in in my life was um, the food. Mm. There was no home cooked meals. Mm. And um, as an athlete, that's that's a challenge to keep that proper nutrition for um, your sport and for d- growing and developing your muscles and bones. Yes, one hundred percent, one hundred percent agree with that. Um, so, what know, did you do? Yeah. How did you adapt? We um, we we um we had a refrigerator and we had a microwave mm-hmm. and um and we ate a lot of microwave dinners every day. Yeah, and and sandwiches. Yeah. Did the school that you went to, did they provide food? Because some school, public schools do that and stuff. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I was, 
I was in high school at this time, I believe. Um, and my breakfast um, was McDonald's. Uh, it was around the corner from, from the dojo. Mm -hmm. um, so on the way to school, I have a uh, McDonald's breakfast, which was very good. Awesome. Uh, uh, sausage biscuit. Yeah. You know, um, was was the best. But then, you know, uh, as far as lunch and dinner, then uh, well, lunch at school. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes I did serve breakfast at school, but it wasn't too um, too good. Yeah. Um, lunch at school, um, not the best lunch, but yeah, you know, it it it, it did what it did. Mm -hmm. um, and then dinner was not too good. Then yeah. it was just another microwave dinner you know yeah. and and they were awesome at first <laughs> yeah it was it was exciting it was yeah awesome. it was exciting as you said it was yeah, a little bit of an yeah, adventure you know you know, yeah, you know in yeah. three minutes i had my dinner boom yeah <laughs> you know sounds very steak and the mashed potatoes and the little brownie and 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 then yeah. the turkey and this and that and, um then but then after, yeah, after a while after a while it got a little yeah trying yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 and then on. Um, but you were surviving. You were making it work, and yeah. you know, a parents are able to start. You know, everything was starting to get their feet back under them, and like you said, Pete, it wasn't bad. You know, some people no, have it way yeah. worse than that. You right. know, and right. it's kind of cool. Like just as an athlete, like it's neat that you got to pretty much eat, breathe, live, sleep. At your training, at the, I at mean, the training you, you were yeah. there, and I think yeah. that maybe that was a whole exciting moment in your life and an adventure in your mom in your life because it really ingrained how central karate was to you. You you lived it, you breathed it, you were there, and it it taught you that drive of of who you are today. Would you would you think that that is a an impactful moment? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Um, like. I because going going through that and, and and again like you said you know at first it was it was exciting and it was fun you know um, and then it wasn't so exciting and it wasn't so fun um, and and a little embarrassing yeah. at um, at some times you know because in in, in New York your your storefronts um, um, are street level so think of the best way to describe it for um, for for us in Florida, and I, I'm, I'm a Floridian now, yes. um, is to say like a strip mall. Mm -hmm. So think of your strip mall that has store after store after store. Um, but that is where everyone is walking, that they came out of their buildings to go to work, to go to the train station, to go to the bus, to go to school. So the, the 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 sidewalk is is full of people just walking back and forth. So I had to uh, come from inside out, and there's gates on every store. Mm -hmm. um, every store has a gate. So I would lift up the gate every morning to walk out, and then close the door, and then close the gate as if I was walking out of my house. But I'm walking out of the store, and then closing the store back up. So in my mind, um. I'm seeing people look at me like, why are you coming out of this gated store yeah. early in the morning and then closing it back up? Mm. Um, and maybe they didn't. Yeah. They didn't even know what, what was going on. You right. Know? But um, your mind but, was starting to make stories of maybe how people viewed you because of your situation. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I would sometimes wait um, till there was no one around like, Cause I can look outside. It's big windows. I look outside and, and see when um, uh, no one's walking. And then I, I rush out, and open the gate, close the gate um, before anyone is walking on that, in that block and that sidewalk yeah. at that time. Um, so, so going through all of that has, um, it's made me so strong. Yeah. You're resilient. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I fear very little um, just because of, 
of everything that I went through uh, growing up, uh, everything that I went through, even as an adult. Mm -hmm. um, so all those trials and tribulations, I mean, I, I just, I'm not so afraid of things like it. What should I be afraid of? <laughs> you know, yeah. like it's, um, I don't know. It, it, it definitely made me a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. It's you've had those forged through fire. You had those challenges early on and you were, you learned how to meet them. You know, yeah. and, and not only, you know, we talk about karate and, and its form of physical fighting, but the most important part, would you feel, is the emotional strength and the psychological strength that comes behind that, the discipline, yes. um, the knowing when to strike, when not to strike, and then the careful dedication. So, yes, you're training your body physically, but would you say the most important part of the training was mentally and emotionally? And then you had not only had in the technique, but in your life and how your family was meeting these struggles and you can't run away from it. You know, like your first competition, you couldn't run away from it. You had to, you had to fight it. You had to survive it. And, and would you feel that that just made a huge change in who you are? Oof. 100%. 100%. And for the better. Yeah. Yeah. And for the better. Um, you know, li life in general, um, you know, you, you could have, and I and I, I truly believe in this, you, you could have everything you want and 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 maybe everything you need and, and still have some you know downsides, still have some trials and tribulations that you will go through. Um you can be the richest man or woman in the world and 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 you're still gonna go through something at yes. some point in time. You know, um, you know, and, and I know a lot of people say, you know, oh, money is the, the root to all evil. Um, and I, I don't necessarily believe in that. You know, I, I believe in, um, you know, who has that money and what they're doing with that money is more so yeah. uh, the root to, to evil, you know, because there's a lot of good people that have uh, had money and, and, and because they have money, they're doing awesome things for yes. those who are a little less unfortunate it's what you choose to do with that gift that's been given you whether it's money or whether it's talent or whatever it's it's right. been given to you how are you going to use it right mm -hmm. and um going back to to you know my my upbringing and how it's helped me um you know we we go through things in life and and it can put us down we yeah. can we can feel like we we can't we can't go anywhere. We're stuck. We're you know we're we're at the bottom of the barrel. We can feel depressed, you know. And I think because of all the things that I've been through, um, that I can push through pretty much almost anything, almost anything. You know, I'm I'm, I'm I don't say oh I I can push through anything and this that no. You know, because I've been I've been down more than one time mm -hmm. um, in my life, um, and 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 it's gonna happen again. That's that's life. Life yeah. is like a roller coaster. Um, Amen. And I'm just here, and I'm just gonna ride this until the wheels fall off. You know, and that's yeah. all I'm gonna do. Uh, but but I've been I've been at some very down uh, points in my life, um, both when I was younger, um, older. And 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 even not so 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 long ago as well, um, mm -hmm. and and being uh, down. So some people say, well, you know, a lot of the things that you you've told me sound like you had depression or this and that, and it could be, you know, and without any um, medication yeah. or without. Um, doing some crazy things. Um, I think I was able to push through and only because of everything that I've been through. Mm -hmm. um, only because. Um, because there, there, there are definitely some points 
um, in in my life where you feel like this is the bottom. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's no way that that I can, can even try to get up from here. Mm. Um, and that's how you feel. Is it true? No, obviously it's not true. Um, but I don't feel the I don't feel those um I don't feel those moments anymore because I I feel that I do have the strength to um to push through. Where do you feel that that strength comes from, Pete? Um, how how did you find that strength? How do you, how did you get yourself out of that low point? Out of that, if people would define it as depression, but it's it's not what most people have turned that into you know obviously yes there's things that you know sometimes people struggle with you know medically and that but then there's that's i think sometimes it's almost a go-to as like an excuse like okay well i i i'm having i'm struggling so oh i'm so depressed and i've got mm -hmm. anxiety and yes people mm -hmm. legit do have that like that is that is a very right. difficult thing to live with if you have right. that but but feeling anxious feeling low and depressed that is also just part of life and a natural thing of living. And instead right. of sometimes trying to excuse it away, how, Pete, how did you face it? How, what gave you the strength to be able to, sometimes if you just don't even want to get out of bed or, or, or face that challenge, like how, how, Pete, how did you find that strength to just pick yourself off, literally dust yourself off and keep going? Like how? That's exactly, that's exactly. Um, uh depending on what time in my life i was feeling like that is um what helped me so um when i was uh younger and whatnot it was just the fighter and the you know the the, the martial arts fighter comp competitor mm -hmm. you know i don't like to lose mm. you know i'm i'm gonna do whatever i need to do to win you know i just do not like to lose um, at, at other points, it's, um, uh, my family, you know, um, you can't let them down. Um, you know, you just, just push through, um, my son, you know, just showing him just to, you're going to go through hard times and you just got to continue to push through. Mm -hmm. You want to so be an I, example I, for him. Yeah. So at, at different points in in my life when I was going through stuff like this, um, there was just different key uh, components and and people and feelings that helped me. So it wasn't just one; it was it was multiple. It was a combination of the environment in which you were in, and and mm -hmm. each each challenge you met it because you had a different influence in your life at that time and then that mm -hmm. taught you that strength or that character trait or that technique to get through something and then right. the context was different in another situation you feel that all of those helped you gained more of a multi-dimensional way to face challenges 100 percent, yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it, and it also goes back to uh, uh where i was born and raised you know mm -hmm. um Survival of the fittest, you know. Yes. Uh, New York, the concrete jungle. Yeah. Um, and and it 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 really is like that because yes. um, no one really even has to teach you. You you just you have to survive. Mm -hmm. And there's things that you learn just being in New York City um, that doesn't have to be taught. Um, just because the environment that you're in, you know, I mean, and, and you can, again, you can be in New York city and you can, you can live in Trump towers or, you know, I don't know, you know, other some other yeah, guys, big expensive loft or whatever loft yeah. somewhere, you know, and, and not go through or even think of anything that another borough or another part of that city has that is total opposite of how and what, you are doing in your life. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do have to, um, again, say like, I, I wouldn't change it because it definitely made me who I am today.
you know yeah. um i remember i remember uh when i had my my car and and and, and live in new york and well we would go out with, uh, with my friends and whatnot um and coming back home and it's it's late you know um and having to drive around for hours to look for parking and then I have to park about seven, 10 blocks away, you know? So it's, it's about maybe about a 10, 15 minute walk back to, to my apartment building. And then, you know, uh, a lot of areas are very well lit, but then you have some areas that are not. And um, I remember not in those areas, not walking on the sidewalk because um, you, have, you have your buildings um, you have the sidewalk and then you have your parked cars and the sidewalk is very, uh, somewhat narrow. Um, and I remember thinking, well, there can be someone hiding in between the cars oh, wow. that may try to rob me or someone hiding in the doorway of one of the buildings that may jump out and hide. So I would walk in the middle of the street to my apartment building. And this was normal. This was, it was like, I didn't walk home, um, feeling you know like I wasn't gonna make it to to my apartment yeah um I didn't say I don't want to go out no more because I don't want to uh potentially you know um get involved in in some type of robbery where mm -hmm. they do jump out and stuff like that it was it was normalized it was normal mm -hmm. um you just take the necessary steps to prevent it Yes. You know, um, and then eventually I ended up getting a parking lot, but the parking uh, garage was, was still like two or three blocks away from my uh, apartment building. I still walked in the middle of the street and whatnot. But um, but going through this and growing up like this, um, you know, it, it just it makes you stronger. You have to be because if you're not, you won't survive. And and if you're not. I would have stayed in my apartment. I would have never left the apartment. I would have went from school to training to back to the apartment. And I would have never met the friends and, 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 and I call them family that I've met and had the opportunity and chances to really live life without yeah. being afraid of life. That's so beautiful, Pete. I love that. It was that sense of that jungle of growing up in it that you had to ingrain in yourself a sense, a natural sense of facing that fear every day, but not letting it control your life, embracing it and helping it, letting it guide your life and become a part of you instead of resisting against it, just bringing it in, but then making your own internal um, shield of defense, you know, it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is what I live with. I'm going to face the fear. I'm going to train myself to defend against it and not let it suffocate me. Right. And I I just, so something as simple as growing up and just being kind of confident, but alert in your surroundings and being able to be confident in defending yourself and living like that, whether it was, you know, going to school and, you know, walking in a dangerous part of town that's almost becomes like um, a symbol of your life of any challenges that come your way. You have that confident defense mechanism to help protect yourself and that you're not going to run away from the fear. You're going to like, yep, I'm going to walk towards it or walk through it. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yes. yes I definitely. love that. I mean, you know, there's, there's definitely some, some areas that you, you avoid, yeah. you know, so it, it's, it's, there's, exactly what you said and then there's also there's a fine line between um uh confidence and 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 intelligent mm -hmm. um and i say that because there was definitely certain um uh areas or blocks that i would know um if i'm gonna walk through this block i'm asking for something to happen you know, yeah. So I'm going to just walk around this block. Yeah. You, it's Even the difference. With the confidence. Between, yeah. But there's a difference between being confident and being arrogant. You know, 
So you weren't, you were smart. You will used mm-hmm. your wisdom. You were confident what you were going to do, but you're not going to be arrogant in it where you just throw caution to the wind and just don't think with intelligence. You don't think mm-hmm. with, it's, it doesn't mean that you're cowering away from anything. No, no yeah. you have the strength and, and the confidence and the bravery to admit, you know what? That isn't the best situation. This is going to be a better choice or a better decision. And I'm going to meet that with confidence. So yeah, you learned, as you said, at a young age, you know, the difference between being confident and being arrogant and arrogant is just not listening to the voice of reason. Yeah. 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 That's so great. And that you can use that in any aspect of challenges that come our way. I love that. I love that. What, um, are there any p- poignant moments in your life where you experienced kind of connecting with that, the interconnection of events, of people, lessons, things that kind of like all culminated together that you just almost had this aha moment? You know, was there something, uh, just maybe one event or or just a general feeling that connects you to the lessons that you've learned in in life and how it connects to the world around you? I can't, I I wouldn't be able to say one event. Um, It's hard. That that's a, that's a good question. And that is a, but I think maybe that question to put a specific specific answer. answer. Yeah. Yeah. I think just because maybe the way you lived your life, you live that constantly Mm -hmm. where some people maybe don't have that opportunity. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I guess so. I can say that. Yeah. Because there, there were the numerous, numerous events uh, that I've been through that were eye opening. Yeah. Uh, numerous people that I've um, met and had encounters with, whether it was a good encounter or a bad encounter that were, that was eye opening mm-hmm. um, situations. So yeah, it's, it's, um, I definitely, definitely went through a bunch of those with, um, uh, with uh, individuals and as well as uh, just different um, events yeah. uh, in my life that I that I've been through, yeah. Um, and and that that would probably be the the easiest way I can yeah kind of answer that question because that yeah. that was a that was a very good question, <laughs> but then a very hard question because yeah. how how my upbringing and how my life. Um, I can't put yeah. um, one thing on that. And that's, that's cool because I think that shows the difference of, you know, some people have that, that one big moment or that big life event. And it's kind of neat just reflecting on that and kind of thinking about how other people have had those challenges in your life, in their lives, and then how you've had them kind of like sporadically placed you've lived it almost like kind of like a constant thing. It kind of goes back to what you were saying before is that you've had different challenges along the way and whoever's in your life at that time or the environment that you're in, you've learned that life lesson along the way from there. So it's yes. kind of yours has been kind of sprinkled, Spr- sprinkled, sprinkled throughout. Throughout, the, yeah. throughout my whole life yeah. and, it's, and it's still going to be sprinkled yes. and, and still is being sprinkled. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I think, I think maybe connecting that to maybe the answer to that question is looping back to what you mentioned before that you really don't, fear anything because you've constantly been living with challenges along the way. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it, it, it's an awesome, it's an awesome way to live too. Because yeah. there, there, there was a, a point in time where, where I feared um, not someone or something or whatnot, but just, just living in, in fear because sometimes what happens is, when 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 you go through situation after situation after situation, you kind of already start to expect something bad is going to happen. Well, mm-hmm. then okay, something bad is going to happen. So you you kind of already living with with that little bit of uh, fear, you know, um, because you you just continue to to go through. Uh, these uh, trials and tribulations and yeah. um, as Would opposed you find to that, yeah go ahead um, as opposed to I try to look at my trials and tribulations now more recent and, and not just today but but 
in, in my older age um, as not so much of a trial and tribulation and not so much of a hard time, um, but as if it was supposed to be done like so. Mm. I was, so uh, my current, uh, I, I, I messed up my thumb pretty bad. It's pretty swollen right now Ooh. and whatnot. So I look at it and, and then I have, um, I have a gig, um, uh, this, this Saturday, I'll be gone for a week. Oh, nice. So I'm like, my, I, my thumb, I can barely move my thumb. Ah. I have a gig this weekend and I'm looking at it now back, back in the day, I would be so stressed out and I'm like, oh, like, what am I going to do now? I'm like, this is what was supposed to happen. Mm. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to roll with the punches and I'm going to make the best of it. And, and that's all I can do. Yeah. I can only make the best of it. I can't, uh, poof, my thumb is, is, is fixed and now I can move it and, and whatnot. Um, it's messed up. Now I'm, that's out of my hands. Yeah. You know? Um, so I, I, I just little things like that. Like it just makes life so much easier when, when, when you're not stressing about the little things. And you yes. just accept it mm-hmm. and keep on moving. Not to you, say that is easy. To no, do. no, but you're not like, right. you're not questioning. Oh, why did this happen? Well, like, why now? Why did this happen now? Like, right. oh my goodness. Cause then that's just yeah. counterproductive and we all do yeah. it. That's just part of being human. It's just, it's yeah. just what we do. And we just start why, you know, you always wish for it to be better, but I love yeah. how you put that Pete. Like, no. This is how it's supposed to be. This is yeah. what it is. It and then is. the adventure is how are you going to meet that challenge? Yes. How, how yes. are you going to overcome that? And then you've got a cool story to tell afterwards. And then yes. someone yes. else comes yes. along and they're like, oh, this happened. And I'm really worried about this or very low about this or anxious. And you're like, well, something like this happened to me back in this time. And this mm-hmm. is what helped me get through it. And then yes. that story can maybe help that person. 100%. I love yeah. it. And and you have such, such a great foundation and such great stories. What character traits would you like to impart to your students in your dojo when you instruct them? What legacy do you want to impart to them? to take with nice. them in life, not just, you know, they could be in karate for a little bit. It could be right. part of their whole life. Um, I, my coaches in gymnastics, they always taught that we're not just teaching gymnasts for gymnastics. Mm-hmm. We're teaching gymnastics for life mm-hmm. because there's, there's two things that you can get. Do you feel, uh, I, I, we were talking about this, uh, prior to the interview, um, that a sport can give you it's the emotional, the mental discipline, and also the physical Mm -hmm. discipline because getting to grow up in a sport like karate or gymnastics, or even as equestrian, when you're young, you're building your body, you're building your muscle structure and your bone structure. So as you're growing and your body's physically developing, it's developing that muscle and bone structure. That's going to be with you the entire rest of your life. You may, you may get in and out of shape, during right. the roller coaster of life, depending upon your physical activity and things that are going on, but your body never loses your body remembers. It never loses that bone density or the way your body's built or the muscles are always going to be there. So what do you want to give your students, not only in terms of learning how to take care of their bodies physically in the future through karate, but also the emotional and physical discipline and character traits that that they will take with them beyond karate into their life. Right. What are some of those things that you really that drive you every day when you go into the studio that that's what you want to leave behind with your students? Um, I would, I would say, uh, and, and, and this is a, a lot of uh, martial arts stu- studios and whatnot does uh, says this, but the, the confidence and, and, and not just confident, in themselves, but in confident in to trust that whatever door opens for them, 
take it, go through. And if it's the wrong door, you come right back out and you'll go through another one. So just confident in life um, to not be afraid to take chances, to be okay with um, failing. Um, because I definitely and truly believe without failure, um, you cannot succeed. Um, you know, you, you have to, you have to fail sometimes and to learn, to overcome it, to succeed. Um, and I believe that's how, uh, this life is, or, or this world is made. Um, you know, whether you believe in, you know, a higher power or you don't, whether you believe in God or you don't, whether you believe in, you know, science or energy or mother nature, um, there, 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 there's always, uh, something bad and good happening. There's always something bad and good. It's never just good, 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 good. Oh, this is good. Oh, I won the lotto. And then I got this and then this, and this. There's, there's always going to be something, the yin and the yang, you know, mm -hmm. something opposite that happens, period, you know, um, no matter what your beliefs are. And even if you don't believe in anything, it, that's just what happens, you know. And I truly uh, feel like this and, and believe in that. You know? So if, if they take that, you know, and, and be okay with that and, and continue to, to be um, confident and um, dedicated into whatever they they want to pursue or do um, just to always put a hundred percent into that. I love that Pete. I love that. It's how you've lived your life and how you are sharing with your students to have them confidently seek balance. Mm -hmm. You know, the yin and yang is balance yes. and the bad in life is necessary to appreciate and to create the beautiful in life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. One hundred percent. I I tell that to my my son, uh, um, or try to talk to him about that now. He's only twelve. Uh, I just turned twelve months ago, and he's still young. But hopefully, you know, all the the stuff that uh that I tell him, he, you know, um, or it stays with him throughout his his life and he's very he's a perfectionist um so he's very hard on himself when he mm -hmm. fails and, and and i try to tell him like you 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 have to you have to fail and and i i i do like the fact that he doesn't like to fail because you need that too yeah but there's a certain there's a, there's, a, there's a certain degree of how much you can get down on yourself yeah. for that specific um, point in time where you failed or didn't do 100% and could have done. You know, yes, you shouldn't feel good about it because if, if, you, do, if you don't really care, then you have no drive. Mm. And I shouldn't say you have no drive, but you have less of a drive. And, yeah. And that's going to run into, uh, you know, other situations later on the line when you get older and stuff like that. So yeah. I do like the fact that he uh, he doesn't like to lose. He doesn't like to fail. Um, so he has that drive uh, to win, to push. Um, but he's so young and he's so hard on himself mm. that he can be a little bit more lenient on himself and. Um, well, hopefully as as he grows up he kind of finds that balance yeah um there and, and whatnot and listens to all the the life lessons that i've tried to teach to him yes. and tell him about you know and help him uh live his life a lot better it's and beautiful. fearless yes fear fearless i love that fearless yeah i love fearless. it you, you've yeah. given that that for me just now i it was like this is cool, Sensei Pete, because you've redefined fearless. It's not the lack of fear. Mm -hmm. It's embracing it and not letting it control you, but letting it guide you and drive you 
yes. and to be fearless because you know the bad is going to come. It's inevitable, right. but embrace it and then push through it because that's going to illuminate the beautiful. Yeah. You, you put that into I words. That. I mean, I, I couldn't even do that, but exactly what you said yeah. is true. You know, but, exactly what you said, you know, not that fear doesn't exist, not to not be afraid because you yeah. need to be, yes. you need to be afraid. Yeah. You just need to it's know. It's a natural, to it's a natural that. instinct. Yeah. It's a natural yeah. instinct and it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to know that it's okay. Yeah. You know, and not let it consume you yeah. and take over. Yeah. Um, you know, and, um, and I've, I, I know we, we've had some, some deep conversations, um, uh, for both of us, for you, for myself, and yes. for just life in general. Yes. Um, and I truly enjoyed those conversations, um, you know, I very, very people. well. Thank um, you. I have too. And, yeah. It's I It's been a great you, solace for both of yeah. us to just to be oh, able yeah. to share those things that we go through in humanity that you feel so alone at right. times. And you're like, oh, and then, you know, and then those dark thoughts come in as far as, you know, like, you know, okay, I feel like I failed at this. That means I'm a failure or, you know, things like that. And it's mm -hmm. just like you have, you know, sensei Pete or whatever. And you just to get to like, talk, talk about it and share that, share the human journey, the human right. condition that, no, this is, this is part of the journey. This is part of the journey. Yeah. yeah I love yeah, it. And it's Be okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. And it, it's, 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 it's uh, not funny, but it's crazy how like we come from two, opposite worlds to say you know yes um how you brought up how i was brought up like i i um uh, didn't see you know trees and grass and horses and stuff like that like yeah that was you know like whoa um you know i saw trees and grass when i went to the park yeah other than that everything is there's there's you no know, very very rare that you uh see grass area unless you're in the park um, but still having those trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't matter where you are from or where you was brought up. There's still going to be, uh, life lessons that are going to hit you and hit you hard at point yeah. at certain points in your time, in your life. Um, and you have to see, you know, what's, what's going to be the outcome if you can, uh, come out of it. Uh, a better person or if you let it consume you mm. and unfortunately some people do and don't know how to um, handle that pressure and it's not good pressure uh, it's a very very um not a good feeling to have all that pressure uh, but if you do come out of a, come out of it at the other end um it is a great feeling yes it to you've become dauntless mm -hmm. you know you yes. have that you've i i again i just love how you've redefined what fearless is and it, it connects to uh one of one of my favorite stars growing up you know especially with the farm and the horses and that i watched a lot of john wayne movies oh, and yes. yes and like you said you know we had our own challenges you had your concrete jungle and on the farm and everything, we had our jungle in a sense, you know, we had packs mm -hmm. of wild dogs, we had tornadoes, we had, you know, drought, just all different kinds of challenges and, right. and, and exciting adventures that taught important lessons in terms of, you know, care and responsibility and, you know, being confident, not arrogant and making those and trying to make intelligent choices and get knocked down and get back up again, you know, and yeah. that's why I love one of John Wayne's sayings is connecting to your definition of fearless is courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyways. Right. And sensei Pete, you've done that in your life. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. That, that is a, uh, I like that saying, I'm going to, I'm going to, going to use that one. Yay. <laughs> Maybe you'll be true. in your Jojo. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's yeah. true. Um, you know, a animals have that instinctively, you know, when, you know, you, you can have the, you know, even, even our pets, you know, um, uh, my dog, uh, golden doodle, he's not a vicious dog. He's, uh, 
furry, you know, well tamed, big puppy. And um, he's laying down next to me. I love it. Yeah, I've got, I've got my big fluffy next to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I walk. I, I walked in uh, the other day very late and the lights were out. And I, I think I had my hoodie on or my hat on. And as soon as I opened up the door, he growled. You know, so even though um, until you knew it was me. Yes. Uh, even though he growled and he took a few steps back as being scared he was ready to defend himself and the house and the family you know um so he he took that fear and he didn't let it consume him beautiful he was ready to do so i i think animals have that instinctively i think we as humans um we we lose that or we um um don't don't understand it agreed no. agreed yeah. we, it gets diluted by society it gets diluted by our environment, yeah, environment. and the animals yeah. are so in tune to that natural mm-hmm. instinct i love that you brought that up pete it's a great way if people have opportunities to be surrounded by animals mm-hmm. we can learn so much from them they can re- they remind us of how we're truly designed by nature yeah. and supposed to be and supposed to react to yes. situations. I love it. We yeah. need to listen to our instincts. Simplify. A lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, life is so, life is so crazy now. And, you know, and I, I thought it was crazy back then, but you know, with, with social media mm-hmm. being awesome because without social media, we wouldn't be able to do this right here. Exactly. It's uh, a great form of connection that can also great form of connection. But yes, has but its also, bet downside. Uh, yeah, very, very, very. You know, um, it, it's it's hard. You, you see the the younger generation um, look at um, these uh, uh, TikTokers or uh, Instagram. Um, 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 I was to say Instagram uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs, yeah, yeah. yeah. They could call them influencers, you know, influencers. and they've got they how many influence. millions of followers and views. And, yes, YouTube, you know, and this and that, influencers. Yeah. And th- so, things could be for a good reason, you know, right. if you have a good message to impart or good right. entertainment quality as an artist, as a performer, this can be wonderful things. But then it can right. also, if it's, it's not used something. properly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and I don't um I don't knock anyone's hustle. You know, whatever you do to to feed you and your family or whatever, I don't knock anyone's hustle. Um, I think these influencers are smart. You know, hey, they they found um the social media um able to pay them and make pretty good money doing it. Why not? At the same time. You know, you have the younger generations um, looking at these Instagram uh, influencers and TikTok and so on and so forth and think that their life is exactly what they see in these pictures and videos. And it's not. Yeah. You only put on what is like the best thing. Right. You know, yeah. and not because that's, not that's the that, lens you want to be viewed that's the, through. That's the lens. Yeah. And that's not and always not reality. Say, Right, not to say that they don't have great lives. Right, you know they 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 are sitting on the beach, you know, making that TikTok or taking that picture and whatnot, and getting paid for it. And they are going to go to another beach. But at one exactly. uh, point or time in their life, they it's not always going to be. It's not every day going to be like that. They do go through their yeah. trials and tribulations as well. Mm-hmm. It's just not posted um, yes. because that's not what sells, you know. Yeah. Although sometimes there are some people that that may go that route and, and post right. all the bad stuff as well, um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's things are not always what they seem to be like. Yes, and uh, I think people, like you're saying, that's not always what it seems. And I think people are with this inter with how connected we are in the world right now. Um, everything is everything is under a microscope, mm-hmm. and I think what's happening is people. I mean, I've done it too. You connect your worth to and compare it to like what you see 
out there on social media, what other right. people are doing. You're like, oh man, I, I, I need to be doing this, you know, mm-hmm. and, and that kind of is, that's their journey. That's not, you right. have to remind ourselves, yours. it's not mine. It's, it's right. not yours, Pete. It's not ours is ours. And you can't connect your self-worth to what other people are doing. That's, that's their thing. Or you can't connect your self-worth by, you know, uh, you know, you worked really hard on that, that acting video and, and you're putting it out and you've created it. And then you're really proud of it and you put a lot of work and it's really good. But for some social algorithm, whatever, it's not getting the views or all the numbers. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you think, oh man, I didn't do a good thing. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, you did a great thing. You did a fantastic thing. It's, it's not that it's just whatever is out there. Don't connect your worth to, to that, to the numbers of views or, the, it's it's like a popularity contest is what it's that's, become, that's, yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's that's has no bearing on your worth or the content that you created. You Correct. know, be confident in what you learned from the process. Be confident in what you've put out there, and it, it's out there. The world's going to take it and run it with whatever the way the world wants to go. But if the the intent is there and the passion is there, that's what matters, and that shines through. And I think people exactly. just get a false sense looking at that social media of yeah. they base their success on it. And you, you can't do that. You can't. No. Yeah. yeah. You can't, you know? Um, yeah. I, I agree 100%. And, you know, not to say that we don't, you know, fall into that trap at certain points in our life. Oh, constant. Know? It's, um, it's sometimes it's, on the daily. <laughs> on the daily. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to wait, hey, wake up. No, yep. you know, yeah. Um, and so on and so forth. But yeah. It, it, it's true but yeah that that's a blessing and a curse with with uh today's technology mm-hmm. you know things were a lot simpler yes. and uh, i'm i talk like i'm you know 102 years no, old no 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 <laughs> but but you we know. have to remember you know it, it doesn't matter what generation mm-hmm. pretty much a lot of the social media stuff is is new that's you know new. so all of us you know whether you're in your 20s or 40s or whatever mm-hmm. you know it, it's you can still relate to almost a simpler time, right. you know, when, when, when right. all of us weren't like this, we weren't constantly right. like this, right. you know, right. and, and basing exactly. our feelings for the day based on what we saw there. Right. You know? Yeah. And so we all can relate to that. It doesn't matter your age with technology's moving so fast and the world's moving so fast that it's mm-hmm. like all of us can say whether you're 15 or 45, Man, it was so simpler then. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, no, was. it was. True. It, it was. was. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, I remember um I used to carry a lot of quarters with me because I had my beep my pager, my beeper. And the the only time that I looked down was when it beeped and it was to see the number and then walk to a payphone to uh call back the number. And and um, you, I would have to give um, specific um, uh, codes to different people so I know who I'm calling back yeah. because um, it's not like today, caller ID and, and, and whatnot. You know, when I get paid, so let's say I, I, I say, hey, Jackie, uh, this is my page number. And then at the end, uh, when you put your number, put pound um, one, right? So yeah. when, when I see the number, uh, I see the pound one. I'm like, oh, that's Jackie. Let me call her back. Yeah. You know, you know, now if it was um, when you, you, you needed to call, you needed me to call you back right away. It was emergency. You put pound nine one one. Gotcha. And that means I have to get, I have to call you back right away. Right. If you wanted to ask me some things, you put pound four one one, you know? Uh, so there was different calls, you know, pound one and then phone one, you know, yeah. so I know it's you. And then I know you want to ask me about something or uh, something bad is happening and, and emergency, you know, so on and so forth. So that's how, uh, you know, I was brought up with that. And, you know, and then later on the cell phones and there was no texting, there was no, no. Uh, surfing the internet on your phone. You know, you, you, you make a call and you receive a call. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it's, um, it's important to have that personal communication. You know, I think with the advancements in communication technology, sometimes people communicate less. 
mm-hmm. you know, because oh, yeah. you have that convenience where you can kind of maybe hide behind a text. Right. And, and we're in, we're in the past, if you needed to talk to somebody about something or if something was bothering you, you called them in person yeah, yeah. or you saw them in person. Oh, you saw them. Yeah, exactly. 100%. And then, you know, instead of like hiding behind a text, you know, or, and then sometimes that can be, you know, things can get misconstrued, can right. be read yeah, wrong with the, your brain puts it in a certain inflection, but that's mm-hmm. not how the person it's texted not, it, not how right. it was meant at all. At you all, know? Yes. So, yeah. And yes. I, I'm so glad you brought that up because technology is going to continue to grow and they're, they're going to mm-hmm. say, Hey, we're more connected now than we were ever. Mm-hmm. Are we, mm-hmm. or is this providing us a way to hide more, yeah. you know? And for yeah. things to get more misconstrued or whatever. I love that you brought yeah. that up because we're, we're, we're connected more yeah. yes. without a connection. Yes. It's, it's not personal. It's not personal. Yeah. It's and not, I think it's yeah. important to remember to keep those personal connections, yes. keep that, the human aspect of it, not the technology yes. aspect, but the human aspect. Yeah. And that, that can affect. Thing. Yeah. That I was gonna, I was gonna say. There's one thing that I, that I try to tell my son too, because you know my son is 12, so he's with his iPhone and his iPad, and mm-hmm. you know texting and and so on and so forth, um, and you know video games and and and, and whatnot, um, but just to say hello, like like I I've, I've I've seen you know um, group of kids, you know I drop them off to school and I see kids like um, walk friends walk up to each other or by each other without just simply saying hey what's up hello or at the end and they're going to part ways see you later bye peace whatever it is yeah uh that they say now um like it's it's you know there's the the those those simple those simple words like are not there mm-hmm. you know um and it's it's crazy uh, to me to to walk up to someone or buy someone and just not say hello yeah unless i really don't like you <laughs> then you're gonna you're gonna know i don't like you you know yeah. be be <laughs> um, honest yeah 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 yep. you know um and i've i've probably already told you you know and this this there's i have to say uh, there's no one that i really dislike you know, at at this uh, point in my life, I don't have uh, uh, any any um, room or time or effort to truly dislike someone. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm too busy doing me, yeah, to even think about or put effort into someone else's. Uh, uh, whatever you know um so yeah i can i can truly say I, I don't i don't have that right now um there may be some people that i'm more fond of than others but i have no energy no time no effort to put forth into uh putting uh hate or dislike to someone yeah yeah, yeah. and that's a beautiful way to live is mm-hmm. to just have that um open love and respect right. emanating from you as a person and then however other people choose to receive it or not to receive it that's on them that's on them yeah that's, yeah that's definitely on them yeah yeah and that's their life <laughs> exactly yes yeah. i love it pete you have such wonderful nuggets of wisdom that we've gotten uh, to talk about and share and and i know that it's going to help people and i know it's going to be enlightening for people and because these are all the human conditions that we all have experienced and will continue to experience so i thank you for helping to define fearless and to teach us to be dauntless and to encourage all of our listeners myself everyone to seek balance to embrace the bad because it's going to illuminate the beautiful. So thank you, Sensei Pete, for sharing your life journey and your life lessons and your passion with others that will help illuminate their lives. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much, Pete. Thank you, Jackie, for having me. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. And congratulations. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank yes. you so much. I know you spoke about this happening for for uh for some time. Actually not too long. And you just you made it happen. Thank fearless. <laughs> made it happen fearless by those that were there to support me and my family and friends. It just and making it possible. That's what we do. It's the journey of life of people that come and and lift you up and help you with your goals and dreams. And yes. thank you so much for that. It is a blessing. And let us all continue to keep doing that for each other. 100%. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pete. Appreciate you. God bless. Thank you. God bless.